Guys, I am so excited to tell you that the only thing difficult about the Keynesian graph is the spelling of the word Keynesian. I finally figured it out and it's the easiest thing in the world. We draw a graph just like we did in microeconomics, except over here we have Y and we have A. We make a zero and we make dotty lines and say that's 45 degrees. What this means is that's the simple part is we had the business cycle where we said, or the circular flow of income and spending, and we said that production, also known as Y, when there's production, there's income, so we had that thing, remember? We had production, which is Y, and then that equals income, which is also Y, which equals spending, which was A. It was not Y. Now all this graph says is this A over here and this Y over here is now plotted on a graph. And this 45 level is if A equals Y. So when A equals Y, it is when the production in the economy and the income in the economy equals the spending in the economy. And where our curve over here intersects it. So... Ta -da! There. That is our equilibrium uh, level of income. Okay, our equilibrium level of income. And that's how easy it is, guys. This is, this is all that there is to it. So there's different ways that they can now complicate this question, but it's not really that complicated. So the first thing you need to understand as the multiplier... Now, in my circular flow, the three flows in the economy, I speak about the multiplier at the end of the video. So watch that one again if you're not familiar with this. But the multiplier is equal to 1 over 1 minus small c. That was the multiplier. The multiplier pushes this cycle to spin round and to grow the economy faster. So you can imagine that if your spending level is over here, and something injects into the circular flow, the spending will go up. So for example, if the government injects 100 million rand to build railways, which is something we need, that 100 rand, because of the multiplier, pushes this line up. And the line will go up, which means our equilibrium point of income will go up. Now, when our equilibrium point of income goes up, it means that we are, the Y in this is higher. So there's more production happening and there's more income happening. And you can imagine for yourself that the only way to really produce that much more is to employ more people. Because otherwise, you know, where, where, does it, where does the income go? You know, who produces this increase or this injection into the economy? So if the government increases their spending, that will lead to a higher A, which will lead to a higher Y, which will lead to less unemployment. And if they increase government spending, that is an expansionary fiscal policy. Okay, and that is that. The other way to do this, the exact same thing, is if taxes go down. And the reason for that is when taxes go down, there's more money to spend. Okay, so this is, you know, I was so scared of this graph, and it's really not that hard. This is the graph. Um, the only way they can really complicate it, so this line here is where A equals Y, is if they start pivoting this A line. Now, pivot means, like, this line, this dot stays the same, but it pivots. And there's three ways to pivot. There's three ways where this line, instead of drawing that black line, we pivot the curve up that way. So we keep this the same. Now, there's three ways to do that. This is autonomous spending. Okay, spending. We, we spoke about spending, autonomous spending. So the, re the way to take this up is if we change the multiplier so well not really no ignore that when we change this 
okay, our marginal propensity to consume. So there's three ways it could pivot, one, two, three. The one is if the marginal propensity to consume goes up, if there is confidence, so if there is this perception that the economy is doing well and that Cyril Ramaphosa is going to make everything work, we start spending more of our money because we feel that it's safer spending our money. This means that the marginal propensity to consume goes up. As soon as that goes up, this thing starts spinning better and it pivots. The other way is if the tax goes down, because our spending, we have more money to spend. So that'll pivot it. And then also our marginal propensity to import. If we import less, it means we are using more of the stuff that's produced in our economy, which means that our production goes up. So if our marginal propensity to import goes down, it's very good for our economy. We produce more, and that means we start spending more. Okay, so that's wonderful. So that's just a little bit of theory. To pivot it, to pivot this A up, is marginal propensity to consume up, taxes down, marginal propensity to import down. The way to push the line up with fiscal policy is to increase government spending. Okay, so to increase government spending. Government spending, as you remember from the flow video, by the way, the flow video is really important. So I, I know you think you know the flows, but just watch it, it's good. Government spending is an injection, so that lifts it. And we also said that investment is an injection, so that would also lift this curve. And however much the multiplier means that whatever you inject, this Y will move even further. So if you can move AO to A1 with, let's say, 100 million, the multiplier will move it further than 100 million. Okay, great. This is very, very brief. Um, but it's a very good start. And from here on, it should be a lot easier to figure out the questions that's asked. Okay, good luck and enjoy.